This demo will show a model-driven enterprise DevOps process using CA Release Automation, CA Harvest, and OpenMakeMeister. The entire process, including the detailed steps of compiling code, deploying the artifacts, is done without relying on a single one-off build or deploy script. This model-driven process is important because moving from project-based DevOps to enterprise DevOps requires exposing and utilizing the core data that comes from these processes. One-off scripts cannot achieve this level of transparency, flexibility, or repeatability. Most other DevOps offerings, commercial or open source, depend on some level of brittle one-off scripts to achieve this process. Our solution delivers a higher level of maturity through the use of models for building and deploying. Our demo is a typical use case for developers' standard continuous integration processes. As I work through these activities, please consider the enterprise DevOps challenges your company faces, which may require supporting multiple teams and multiple platforms across dev, testing, and production environments. Our solution supports what the developers need for their agile practices while delivering the shared control and knowledge to testing and production control for repeating the steps across the life cycle. To keep the demo concise, we will show only the activities at the development state for a Java environment. In reality, you might support Java, Oracle Forms, a database change, .NET, C Unix, and other distributed platforms with orchestrated releases to multiple servers in your test and production environments. Remember the solutions I'm showing today are cross-platform and can support heterogeneous environments, parallel development streams, and concurrent releases across development, testing, and production. We will start the demo by showing you how release automation uses standardized templates for performing the continuous deployment. I will now put on a developer hat and make a change to the website text change. Uh, we would receive a change request in the form of uh, through Service Desk or, or some some issue that may come up from a customer to add on a change value or change of value. So I go in and look at the existing values that I need to modify to see what they are. And I'm going to see that in this particular one, the language preferences include uh, these four languages, but doesn't include German. And the change request is to add in a, an option to select the German language. So I'll reset this. And we'll go ahead and make our change in a software change tool. We, it, it's named as Harvest. And... The CA Software Change Manager Harvest allows for developers to make their changes to code and it also allows you to track the changes to the application as they go through the life cycle of dev, uh, test, software delivery and release. Changes are modified through the use of a change package which allows you to commit changes against a change request and associate it directly to it and keep them together into a package. And so the developer would set a context, go to their local environment where they have a uh, integration with, with the software change manager into a local work area, make their change, save it locally, and commit it into the software change manager repository. Now, when that is committed in, that's going to trigger a continuous integration build process, which is managed by OpenMake Meister for build purposes. Now that could be a continuous integration on check-in exactly like you see here, or as based on a quiet time on the server uh, as developers, multiple developers make changes. And so let's go in and look a little bit at Meister and how it operates and I'll go in and look at my workflow monitor workflow monitors and I see that there is a series of uh, activities working in this case we have a build 132 
that's ongoing. And having this in a web interface makes it easy to get to. There is security around it as to who can view what. Uh, but through the web, I can view the success or failure of the various builds that are going on. And you saw that first page that I showed, uh, which was a uh, overview page, which gives you some metrics on overall how builds are operating. But the focus of this one is the build for text change, build 132. OpenMakeMeister does give you the intelligence to manage your builds and releases in smaller, less risky increments. Through source and library dependency management, Meister supports incremental processing and build acceleration for Java, C Sharp, .NET, C++, Oracle, SQL Server, and C Unix. Meister also serves as a centralized, enterprise-level, continuous integration server that supports all open source and commercial version control tools. It is included with CA Harvest Premium Edition. For this demo, we'll focus on the continuous integration functionality, but it is important to note that none of the build steps, including the compile link and archive, is dependent upon a script, a one-off script. It is 100% model-driven, the same as CA Lisa Release Automation is model-driven for deployments. Here you see the real-time monitor, and that allows you to see the steps as they execute, gives you immediate feedback on the success or failure of each step, and you can create dependencies between steps, allowing you to stop the process if a critical step fails. So I can see from this particular one that I'm getting my update from Harvest. I'm generating a build control uh, file, which is, an, which is a dynamic scanning of the code for dependencies and relationships and to validate that all the pieces you need to do the build are in place. And it does replace the manual scripts that developers would do individually. I'm able to trap the build and publish it into a repository as build output. And I could also commit it into CA Harvest Change Manager if I needed to do that. In this location, release automation can find them and get them to deploy. I'm also able to execute static testing with fine bugs and other products are, are associated with third party products uh, in unit J unit come to mind as ways you can you know statically test code quickly as it's being committed by individual developers or collectively uh, to minimize errors downstream. And finally I can also update or go into and integrate with Lisa for dynamic testing. So the, the virtual ser virtual servers, if you will, that Lisa supports virtual testing, I can leverage that as part of this process. So I can do a lot with each build, or I could have these done at particular levels of builds that I need to have accomplished for dev, for testing, or for pre-production type builds. Remember, this continuous integration workflow you're looking at supports what the developers need for their day-to-day -day operations and processing. A testing or production release may be executed directly from CA release automation, and its CI processes would not be as extensive as they are here. In fact, at that level, there may be more uh, testing or certification or approvals involved before a release were to go into a particular production location. Now, you can dive into each of these steps as they're, as they're executing, but I'll show you a couple of them from an older build so you get a flavor as we see what's happening here. Here is a build audit report, and the build audit report is particularly important because it does replace the one-off build script, and the Meister engine is, has the ability to capture a solid audit trail. Now, whether source, open source, or commercial continuous integration server can provide this level of build audit showing both the source coming from the version control tool and the technology stack that was used to configure the binaries. This audit is essential for enterprise DevOps as the binary configuration must equal the server configuration and the build audit delivers that validation. This can also catch components that were not approved for moving into test or production environments. 
So here you see some information about the server that was uh, in, in question. I'll skip through some of these KBs that are on that server to update it, but they're all there for easy reference. I can look at my environment variables, look at my .NET framework involved, which is key for, uh, uh, for .NET purposes. I can look at my Java package, Java Home, if you will, is set to find out what version of Java is involved. And farther down, we can actually see the individual versions that are under version control that were used in the build. And you can see here, in this case, it shows an older build, build number, uh, version number 93 was used. But I can go over and see that the level of detail allows me to say for each individual file, that was the one that was used. So this account being Java is at is it version 93. That's the version 93 we're, we're talking about right there. So that's a, that's a lot of level of detail, and it does show source to build output. The other reports that you find are the static testing reports, the, the find bugs reports, if you will. And this allows you to uh, run these static tests and get these reports, associate them with the build that they occurred on, but also centralize them into this build uh, environment that we're running with the KB server. So you have a lot of report details about a particular build, but you can also look at some metrics across the builds. You know, from build one to build two, what were the differences in, say, find bugs? I can also go in and look at the results that have been generated by uh, Lisa Virtual Testing. And so here again, I have a way to get another third-party tool, reporting tool, into an environment where it's centralized with the other reports that I'm getting to make it easier to identify and to troubleshoot issues as they come up. The key reports provide the on-demand shared knowledge that supports process improvement. So you cannot improve what you cannot see. Scripts are hidden, provide no metrics. Key reporting shows audit reports, deployment report, and testing results, all of which are important to support the continuous integration events. Meister's CI Engine supports a wide variety of third-party applications and tools, and the calling of any of these external builder deploy scripts if needed to support that process. This allows developer teams to customize their processes in the same way they may with a project-based tool such as Jenkins. But the goal here is to provide developers with the tools they need while providing both testing and operations shared control over that process. Now that the build is done, uh, let's take a look at the results of the deployment. Remember, this there was an integration between OpenMake Meister and Lisa Release Automation. So we'll use a Lisa Release Automation Operations Center to capture that information. You can see here I have a listing of all the releases that were accomplished, success or failure. And so we can easily track these deployments as they move from development through production. I have a, a, a capability of selecting uh, development, test, or production, or all environments. So that's what's going to let me tr capture that sort of thing. So while developers may use a continuous integration process to execute and view, build, and deploy activities, the operation team will use this operation center for running, scheduling, and approving test and production releases. So I can see my latest build, build 122. That version matches the build that came out of OpenMake 122 there. I can see it was 100% successful. I can also look at the calendar of deployments that occurred on a particular day in, in that particular environment filter that I have on it and see that I have several builds that have gone on on the particular day in question today. And I can actually look at the event the, the the build is deployed right out there now and come in and select that and identify the specific values or version of that and it's in fact version 122 now the final wrap-up would be a uh, going back into and looking at the demo application and see if we did get our web change that we wanted to remember we changed it from Italian to German and so I'm going to go in to my account and look down here and select my English 
French, Swiss, and there's my German right there. So this concludes the presentation of Relisa, Release Automation, Harvest Software Change Manager, and OpenMakeMeister Integrated Build and Deploy Demonstration. Thank you.